Okay, so we are live recording right now. So today I want to talk to you about ooh, where's the microphone? Um, authenticity and self-respect. Okay, so this is a, a topic that's top of mind for me right now. And before I do that, I want to just talk about this whole content creation process. So what I don't want to do is write a scripted script and then read from the script and that's it. I don't want to do that. It doesn't feel authentic. And so when I think of authenticity, I think of actually something that Jim Carrey did on a red carpet or some sort of carpet, uh, maybe a couple of years back. And people thought he was whacked and super weird, but uh, there was actually a lot of truth to what was happening. And he was essentially saying that Jim Carrey is not here to this interviewer. And she was very much confused. And if you look into some of his work, especially the method work he's done, like as Andy Kaufman and Man on the Moon, he really lost who he was, who Jim Carrey was, in order to pick up the persona of this other character. And ultimately he realized is that Jim Carrey was a character, that Jim Carrey had beliefs and habits and way of speaking and mannerisms associated with the character of Jim Carrey, that persona, that is self, you know, they call it like self-awareness, being aware of self, but who is self, what is self? And so when I think of authenticity, I think of the thing behind the character, right? The thing that really makes us us. And I don't want to get too like Eckhart Tolle on this topic, necessarily not on this video, but I noticed that when I'm most myself, there is no thought, there is no filter. It is just complete flow. I'm not trying to control uh, someone else's perception of me or get some sort of um, result from this effort. It's just pure, unfiltered communication. It's just an open channel, a clear vessel. And so I was talking to my brother and my buddy about this earlier today is how do we do that with everyone? How do we be ourselves with everyone? And I'm not sure it's something you do, but perhaps it's something that you don't do. You don't try to conform. You don't try to get an external result or fulfill an expectation. Uh, you don't do those things. Instead, you just talk. No filter. There's no filter to this video. I have no agenda for this video. I'm not thinking about the views or the algorithm or how you're even gonna receive this. This is just top of mind for me right now. And so I noticed for me in a lot of in a lot of instances that I've often tried to control others' perceptions of me. One because I wanted to fit in, I wanted to get a job, I wanted to get the what I thought was the approval and validation of a woman. And I still do this sometimes. It's it's pretty tough, especially when you're crushing on a chick. Uh, you know, you wanna have make a good impression. But I realized, and they say this, like, don't chase, like, um, be you, right? Be yourself, okay? But they never really tell you how to do that. So the conclusion that I'm getting to as I'm saying this is don't do anything to be yourself, but rather don't do things to be yourself. Again, don't conform. Don't try to control a result. Don't try to fulfill a certain type of expectation that you have in your head for how things should go and play out. It's not gonna work, it never does. And that's where the energy comes in. You can feel when someone's authentic, when someone's being real with you. Yesterday, I recorded this a video, and I'm gonna, the video before this one, I'm gonna, I'm gonna post it anyway. I was tired, I looked cracked out of my mind because I was exhausted and hungry and depleted. Um, and I think it would have been more beneficial for me to lean into that and just be like, hey, I'm tired. And that's how I felt today at work. And then I got home and did an interview and now I'm feeling a lot more alive and like myself. Um, and so maybe it's not just about not doing things, but also doing things that bring you joy. So there's a bit of juxtaposition and contradiction there. There's a little bit of both. Uh, there's a car passing behind me very slowly. Interesting. Let's see.
Yeah, okay. We're gonna keep going. We're gonna keep rolling. Maybe I should move that. Let's see. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna walk. We're gonna walk and talk as we do this. Ooh, look at the light, it's much better here. Okay. Yeah, so I think it's uh I mean I made a contradiction. Maybe it's not so much of not doing things, but also doing things that you enjoy doing, that bring you fulfillment, that bring you joy. And it's easy to say, much harder to do when you don't know what those things are. And I think at that point, that's where the experimentation comes in, um, of experimenting with things. And again, the things, the litmus test for this is, are there thoughts arising when I do this thing? Am I forcing myself? Is there a resistance? There's going to be resistance on certain certain things that you care about, of course, but there shouldn't be so much resistance that you feel like you have to force it every time you do it. Um, and so don't do certain things, do things that bring you joy, do things that give you no thoughts. There's no filter. It's just pure stream of consciousness, pure connection. And to touch on self-respect, right? I was thinking about that before and what that means and how to go about that. And when we think about respect, we're thinking about, you know, um, upholding someone's standards and treating them with respect, right? Like if you respect someone, say you respect a person in your life, your father or your grandfather, you treat them um, with kindness, with politeness, with whatever standard of respect you have for for them. But how do we do it for ourselves? And it's easy to say, treat yourself as if you would treat somebody else that you love and care for and respect. And that's true. But when we're just saying those broad platitudes, it's much harder to understand until we realize it for ourselves through our own experience of life. And so for me, when I think about self-respect, I think about what are the things I'm not willing to tolerate that are just like, nope, not cool, despite how much my emotions might try to convince me otherwise. Maybe it's a, I'm in a relationship or um, I think I like this person, but they do something that crosses my boundaries or something that's just not aligned with who I am. And I think that's really where it's important to know who you are, what you stand for, what are your values, what are your standards, what are your boundaries. And I see this a lot because I take care of myself. I'm physically fit and I eat healthy. Especially lately, I've been noticing a lot of positive changes um, in terms of my physical fitness. And that is a sign of respect. Then people have come up to me and said, hey, you're really jacked, you're really fit. Well, that's amazing. And then you get that kind of acknowledgement. Um, and so when, you, when people see that you respect yourself through uh, your outward appearance, that goes to show how much you take care of yourself. Um, taking care of yourself versus the lack thereof. If you see someone looks like a Joe Schmo, got Dorito crumbs all over their stomach, um, and just game all day, you can really, I mean, in this case, you really can judge a book by their cover. You could say, this person doesn't seem like they respect themselves a lot. Does this, do you look down when you're talking to somebody? Do you have that confidence? This is a very broad kind of topic, but there's a lot to talk about when we do this type of thing. Hello, how are you doing? So it's important to keep that in mind as you're going about your life. Say, say hi to everybody. That's what you gotta do. Um, that's one thing I do pretty often. People are taking it back. <laughs> Those people that are just like, what the hell is this guy doing? recording down our private driveway. But you know, free country, public property, I don't know, what do you want me to say? What do you want to say? Um, so, authenticity, self-respect. Um, you're not always gonna be 100%, 100% of the time. Sometimes you just gotta, sometimes you just have bad days. And that's the realization that uh, I saw someone tweet about, where it's like instead of justifying or trying to change and optimize for for now, just realizing that some days are not as good as others. And uh, sometimes we just gotta grin and bear it, be stoic in that sense and move forward. So hope this uh, perhaps 
inspired you in some way. Um, just learning these lessons myself and sharing what I learned along the way. Until next time.